Alpha Protocol is definitely an evolution of the things that we've learned in role-playing games. An RPG is a role-playing game. As you go through the game, you basically discover either more about yourself or more about the story that's actually occurring. We Moving into the late 90s, there was a resurgence in role-playing games that we were lucky enough to be part of. Uh, with games like Fallout, and Baldur's Gate, and Planescape Torment, where the genre really advanced and became much more story-based. We have quite a pedigree in, in working on games like Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, Neverwinter Nights 2. And then uh, we were able to branch out to doing sort of more experimental RPGs, which we're doing with Alpha Protocol, which is our first uh, real-world RPG, which I'm incredibly excited about. We really wanted to make an action-y game, something that really made the player have to think both tactically and be a, a little twitchy at the same time. When it comes to Alpha Protocol being the forefront of modern RPGs, I definitely think we have some things going for us. You have uh, player character growth, you know, RPG systems and stats, combat. We have a lot more action elements in a kind of a real-time setting. A story that branches with dialogues. Our combat mechanics are excellent. Tons of items and equipment. And Alpha Protocol really stood out as this this exciting thing that, that we could do where we could take all of this experience and make something that was really new and different and, and incredibly cool. Our use of exploration of, uh, of real world spaces is intriguing for the player because they're actually exploring spaces they've actually gone through in the real world, but now there's a whole lot of enemies to fight, uh, cool things to find, doors to kick down. Like Everything that you're doing in the world is, is sort of tangible in a way that things in, high, in exactly. high fantasy or maybe in science fiction are not tangible. Yeah. Basically you're taking the real world and now you get to, to play around with it to your, to your heart's content. All of the owners and a lot of the senior level people at the company have role playing experience that dates back to pen and paper. And in a pen and paper game, you can kind of do anything you want. And so when we go into making a game, we, we want to try and have that same sort of experience. Choice and consequence in a role playing game, uh, we feel very strongly about it. It's, it's sort of core to the role playing experience. I think you have to have lots of items and equipment and things like that that the player is going to be able to use to grow their character over the game. Everybody talks about story in games and that story is the most important thing, but I think we really hit it. The more we allow a player to customize and sort of choose the skills and abilities they want and then see the repercussions of those choices in the actual game environment is very, very important. Like if you choose to let um, an arms dealer go within the game. If we let him go, he could lead us to the people he sold the missiles to. That actually has game mechanic repercussions on missions that are that are that are tied to that hub. So if you let the if you let the arms dealer go, for example, that actually means terrorists you meet later on. They're more well armed. They're better supplied. In the end, I think what's the most important thing is choice. We're taking you into custody. I think I can smooth talk my way past them. Don't expect any manners out of me. Our basic goal going in was to figure out how we wanted to use dialogue to tell the story, keep it very tense, and yet at the same time have the, you know immense production value, great looking characters, and awesome VO. And so all of those top level goals are what we sort of put in the mixing bowl and, and, and moved around. And the dialogue stance system is what came out of it. There's some things I'd like to find out before you stop breathing. Shout me. Dialogue stance system, or DSS, is a very fancy way of saying you have choices and that the choices are going to dictate the way the game goes for you. If you go through the dialogue stance system and decide to extort somebody, and another player decides to execute them, there are totally different options that come up. Why are you wasting my time? Drinking alone is time well spent then. We provide different options, so it's a little bit of choose your own adventure. Why are you wasting my time? So say there's a character that um, loves for you to be more businesslike. You know, if you come into that conversation and you are uh, being suave, coy, or annoying, you're going to get a lot of different options from them. They're probably not going to give you the information that you wanted, but you may get other things. So what's the code? Tell them the Adirondacks are beautiful this time of year. The player actually has the option to be the dick or be the hero, be completely in the gray. Um, he can be a chauvinist, he can be a misogynist, he can be a ladies' man. I think my gun is working just fine. Not according to the tests we ran while you were under. You're going to hit the same maps, you're going to hit the same levels, but the way uh, characters respond to you 
and how badly you're going to get hurt and how easy it's going to be for you to get access to certain areas so you can progress through the game is entirely dependent on the way you treat different people. We work together, we both get what we want. In a film, people play off of each other in a realistic and uh, very timing sensitive uh, type realistic conversation. So essentially you only have a certain amount of time to respond but it gives a much more cinematic feel. You're not waiting for somebody to respond. If your objective is to reach the train, then we can help each other out. After that, I can't make any promises. Nor can I. Alpha Protocol has, a, has, has quite, a, quite a large amount of dialogue. Not as much as some of our games like Planescape Torment uh, or even Neverwinter Nights 2, but there are a ton of uh, characters that you talk to. What makes you think you're ready? Because I tell you, we get a lot of recruits in here, and you're not convincing me. There's a cast of characters that are about uh, 30 sort of named characters that you encounter, uh, along with a lot of uh, B players and C players. Can I help you? Or are you going to stand there and insult my shop all day? I initially thought it would be much more of a challenge, but once we actually got in the studio and uh, the main, the, the voice actor who plays Michael Thornton, uh, he picked it up within one dialogue. What I don't understand, though, is why we're talking at all, unless keeping me alive is important for some reason. <laughs> It's all about testing the environment and seeing if the environment bites back. So Alpha Protocol should provide the same sort of experience for the player where it just might bite back. When I was told we were making a realistic RPG set in a real world um, um, setting, I, I wanted to try to nail reality as hard as possible. Where I think it really does feel like a very living world and I think it, uh, it feels a lot like characters really are reacting to you and, uh, and responding to the choices that you make. As you go through the game, you, you will grow. Um, he will grow. I think what makes it amazing is see seeing how what you're choosing affects other things down the line. And, and there's tons of opportunity to, to, to move Mike Thornton where you want to in, in the world and, and affect the world. Um, so in Alpha Protocol, we really tried to make the, make the different approaches not necessarily equivalent, but always balanced, and there's always something interesting and fun going on in, uh, in each path. Michael Thornton can't trust anybody uh, because he can make allies or enemies with anybody in the game itself. Who can you really trust? You know, is it the person that says they're on your side? Why trust me with something like this? Why not use your own people? Or is it the person that says that maybe they're working towards the same goal but they don't agree with you? I'm afraid it is out of the question. Or is it maybe you're the person that you thought at the beginning of the game was your sworn enemy? That's, that's definitely one of the themes that we're trying to approach within the, uh, the storyline of Alpha Protocol. I think some of the most important allies in um, in our game for Thornton would be uh, Yancey Westrich. He's your handler very early on. He has um, especially picked Thornton and, and believes that Thornton can take on this mission. All right, then pack your gear. Konstantin Breko, he's one of my personal favorites. He's a, uh, a Russian mob boss who is completely obsessed with American 1980s culture. Z, uh, our, our German uh, cougar. Based on how you uh, align with her, uh, you can gain a lot of different um, resources too. Different equipment, ammo, different mercenaries that can come with you on missions, uh, and just uh, different insights on how to go through levels. We should talk. I do not want to shoot you. In Alpha Protocol, you will visit Saudi Arabia. Um, from there, you can travel on to Moscow, Rome, or Taipei. When people play video games, they want to have fun. They want to, they want to get away from their jobs and, and mundane, you know, usual things and see something new, see something different, see something fantastic. You're traveling all over the world, and we wanted to make sure that when the players are going from different hub to hub, that they know exactly where they are in the world. I think Alpha Protocol, because it is heavily story driven, I mean, that's really what's, what's, what's going to make Alpha Protocol really, really push the limits of RPG. So the question is, who can you trust? <laughs>